Nicola Matteazzi. I am the head of electrification for HP Cox. Um, basically, my presentation and our discussion will be based on uh, the works that my company do. Uh, it is very different from very different fields, mainly related to powertrain. Uh, moving from uh, internal combustion engines in the past and still in the present and now moving into the electrification field. Uh, in the middle, there are very different uh, opportunities uh, uh, to work on, very different projects uh, from uh, automotive to industrial application, defense uh, and uh, of highway, for example. So it's very uh, differentiating uh, the, uh, the various application of our work. So uh, let's start with the presentation. HB uh, Coxa. Uh, has been uh, a company present here in uh, Modena field uh, from, uh, I, I think, about 10 years. Uh, it evolved a lot in time. Uh, this due to the fact that uh, we started as a very small engineering team. Then we developed in, uh, in time, uh, adding manufacturing, uh, production, uh, product development, uh, and working and uh, expanding also the fields of application. We are not only involved in the automotive field, but also motorsport is a very big asset for us, in particular in F1 with the Ferrari, uh, but also different uh, fields. For example, of highway is very present here on the territory and also internationally. Defense and the automation solution has been added to differentiate a little bit also the market uh, that we are working on. Uh, in terms of values, uh, we, we are still quite a small company around the 300 people you will see later but basically we are kept uh, our uh, innovative and flexibility that was our dna from the very beginning of the company so it's still a, a place where you can find the possibility to uh, cover different fields to change uh, your relationship with the with your work and how the work impacts in, on your life and how you work in team uh, you basically know all the company, which is not straightforward in very big companies in these days. So it, it, it's a nice place to work, uh, both for what we do and also on who we are, basically, in terms of people. Uh, of course, uh, customers are very important where we are speaking about uh, uh, service companies. And uh, these are our customer base. As you can see, not so many customers, but very important one. We try to have very deep relationship between us and each of our customer. Uh, many of them are motor body related, Ferrari, Lamborghini, CNH. Uh, but also we have some uh, international customers like Harley Davidson and um, Bugatti Rimac, so Aston Martin, very, very different different application. Uh, automotive, motorsport, off-highway, defense, you, you can see all the, the fields. Uh, you see a lot of OEMs here, automotive OEMs, but you see also tier ones. Uh, tier ones or uh, uh, component system suppliers. So we are, we are like a tier one, a small tier one, uh, that is supplying very uh, customized solution on a small series production also. For uh, higher series production, we work with the tier ones or directly with the OEMs in developing uh, a product that actually we are not producing inside due to the fact that our company still is not so big to have those very big investment to go to, to, go to the very high uh, production. Uh, this is our turnover. Uh, 30 millions in 2022. Uh, here we have the market share of the turnover. So automotive is still a big, uh, big part of it. Motorsport also a big part of it, in particular for manufacturing. Uh, but there is also highway, which is uh, not straightforward to have a, a turnover like this uh, focused on that turnover. In particular, uh, we are proud of the fact that a lot of that turnover is coming from innovation or innovative fields, in particular for electrification. 
And now, uh, as you can see also in the picture, we are very focused on the electrification development, in particular for uh, product development and the pro product supply into production. So we develop products for electrification uh, from uh, blank sheet up to the production, so complete uh, uh, product loop. Uh, 300 people in HP, uh, most of it uh, engineers, very young uh, average age, uh, 30 years old. I just uh, move after <laughs> the after the average age <laughs> this year. So very young people, a lot, a lot of, com of them are coming from university. So we have a very big base of university guys working with us in, in our teams. Every team is then structured with some experienced people that are not only very experienced in their field, but they are very good in teaching. Because if you have a lot of young people, you need to teach uh, very well to them and very fast to make them ready uh, to be um, at the level of, uh, of our market. And so, uh, and then there are some uh, management that actually helps uh, everything and goes go fine or uh, set up all the, the difficulties that, uh, of course, young people can find uh, in, in their path. Uh, a lot of uh, growth in the electrification. 60 of those engineers are electrification from product development, engineering to testing. And a lot of new graduates for sure. These are some of our investments. It, I have to say it's not so updated because investment in these days are very quick and uh, day by day um, involved. Uh, testing, uh, we have a testing facility. You see later some uh, pictures, uh, both for internal combustion engines and uh, electrification. Uh, metal additive. We have a metal additive uh, facility where we can uh, basically print uh, uh, aluminum-based alloys, uh, in particular for motorsport-related uh, internal combustion engines part. Uh, software and hardware. Uh, we have a cluster uh, for simulation with uh, about, uh, I think, 200 cores of um, uh, computing power uh, used for uh, structural analysis, uh, CFD, uh, electromagnetic design, and so very different, uh, uh, very different kind of uh, simulation, and also some uh, artificial intelligence in, in involvement, uh, also from the hardware point of view, because here the needs are quite a little bit different. So, um, so some hardware related to to be able to make the the job uh, well. CNC machines. We have a CNC um, factory. Uh, and then some buildings for logistics, uh, production, test, uh, testing, and so on. Here are some pictures about uh, uh, some in part of the of the company. This is some. This is the box lab. It, it is a place that is dedicated to university. We have uh, several um, collaboration with university, and they are based in this box lab, which is a container uh, redesigned. Uh, in order to be uh, offices. Uh, this is the testing facility. You can see two of our four test cells. The first one is the single cylinder Formula One uh, test bench. The second one is the GTCAR uh, internal combustion engine testing facility with the, all the uh, emission instrument uh, in order to be able to assess uh, um, the emission level of the uninternal combustion engine. We have also an um, electric motor inverter testing facility uh, where we can test our electric motors and power inverter, and then also another uh, test uh, bed similar to the GT Car 1. So it's basically the same uh, reproduced to do all the tests. This is the additive uh, manufacturing center. We have uh, the SLM machines that actually are able to uh, print uh, uh, the aluminum uh, alloys uh, components. We have a 3D scanning uh, tool in order to 3D scan the, the component and do a quality analysis in terms of overall uh, features and uh, shapes. And then we have uh, also the um, uh, metallurgic analysis uh, a metal analysis uh, uh, center where we can do some uh, alloy 
uh, and uh, microscope analysis on uh, on the final products of course we also have a quality a quality area with Zeiss machines in order to do all the 3d um, um, 3d uh, geometric uh, uh, analysis we have an assembly lab where we can assemble transmission uh, electric motors uh, uh, internal combustion engines uh, and uh, other uh, different automation or defense systems um, it is very linked with our engineering department so often the development teams are going into the assembly department or for example, the electrification team is actually based inside the assembly area. So we have uh, the offices really near the prototype uh, facility in order to be able to have uh, that kind of exchange that is very important when you are developing new products, particular for prototypes. A logistic hub. Here uh, we have some, uh, um, let's say, overview of uh, kind of uh, products uh, that we are developing or example of applications so there is some slides about it uh, in terms of uh, uh, electronics and control uh, we have acquired uh, last year and, and we merged together uh, um, a company that was based both here in Modena and in Pisa that is actually doing software development and control development for several fields um, they mainly work for OEMs and they are uh, doing all the controls that you can find on a tractor, on a supercar or a, a construction machine. So from uh, very complex uh, uh, torque uh, uh, optimization of um, torque vectoring on a supercar up to the power splitting inside a very complex uh, um, tool like a tractor. So they are doing a lot of uh, different uh, kind of controls both related to safety but also to performance um, and uh, a lot of electrification involved uh, activity so this is a company that is uh, actually in the hp group uh, where if you are interested in the software and control field you can find some opportunity to actually work on real and uh, interesting projects because uh, they are very involved on uh, the leading edge of actual control application in the automotive field and the off-highway. Another company we acquired last year is AT Motor. AT Motor is a Soliera, so near Modena based company. Uh, they are focusing on electric motor manufacturing for the industrial field. Um, different fields uh, in the industrial uh, area. Uh, from uh, lifters to uh, motors for uh, small vehicles, uh, uh, for clifters, uh, something like this. They're mainly focusing on uh, electric motor with a very long experience in the stator manufacturing. Um, it is not a competency so easy to find nowadays because it's very related to uh, technology uh, competencies uh, and the capability also to be able to product, uh, to produce uh, uh, to up to um, small to medium uh, volumes. As you can see, they are about 10,000 pieces per year, which is not straightforward for this kind of component. And the, the stator is also the most critical component inside an electric motor due to uh, insulation and performance related topics. And it's also the most complex one in terms of technology because it, there are several components and materials working all together. You need to have a specific machine to manufacture them. They needs to match the design features. So it's it's not a straightforward component. And having here in Modena a facility you know, that's capable to build this kind of components and still be competitive on the market uh keeping in mind that uh, there is a very strong competition in this field uh, it's not straightforward and it's very important for the motor valley and for uh, for our group uh we have uh, several um projects going on uh, in terms of innovation uh, collaboration with university mm, let's say that we can uh, sum it up to our uh, uh think project which is involving several uh, contents. University, for sure. So in all that is innovation, 
universities are very involved in our field. So we are working with several professors of different uh, uh, universities in order to uh, work together in new projects uh, or in new technologies. Uh, but not only university, uh, nowadays is not uh, enough to have uh, uh, the competencies of uh, university or the, their uh, natural uh, trend to uh, analyze in, in detail some contents in order to, uh, some topics in order to, to make the technology advance. We also need an open innovation style. So we try to have an open mind when we are innovating. It's not like in the past where you are trying to innovate it as a secret. Okay, you have a secret you don't want to share. We want to share the innovation because uh, uh, innovation is not uh, no more based on inventions. It's made on uh, the technology um, availability on the supply chain. So we work a lot with our uh, suppliers. We work uh, with our customers, but we work also with some of our potential uh, competitors because often your competitor then may be your, your partner in a different te technology or a different market field. So open innovation is going uh, outside what is the market, uh, what is the, the actual business, where for sure secrecy or uh, uh, confidentiality is very important. Here we are working a lot in an open mind view. So also training, because when we are we are we have decided to move into a new technology, we need also to train our people. That maybe, for example, to give you an example, in the past we had to make this transition from internal combustion engine to the electrification, and still keep those competencies. We choose some of the a part of our company that was uh, capable of uh, reaching and um, uh, get those kind of competencies and grow and move uh, in the middle of these two uh, technologies, and we train them. And now we have uh, cross teams with uh, several people that uh, have worked uh, several years in the field of internal combustion engine and standard mechanics, and now are working on the field of uh, electrification, which is. Uh, uh, a strategic asset because we have uh, uh, people designing electric uh, motors that are uh, very e expert in complex mechanical design, which is 90% of an electric motor design, the mechanical point of view and the technology point of view. So being able to have those kind of competencies that are up to date also with the uh, electrification or, for example, the hydrogen technology is very important. And then, of course, uh, funding. Funding is basically uh, international projects, uh, European funded projects, uh, public projects uh, that are very important to push forward some technologies and to make uh, distant uh, companies uh, merge together and work together in order to, to, to work in these, new, in these new projects. Here's something about uh, universities. We have uh, a strict contract uh, with uh, five universities, uh, Firenze, Bologna, Pisa, Modena, and Perugia. Uh, each one has a, about a specific field. Uh, with Modena, we're working a lot in, on electrification. With Bologna, a lot uh, on uh, sensing and inter artificial intelligence. Uh, Perugia, you know, on the mechanical design. A Pisa in sev several different fields uh, on simulation. So there is this kind of uh, uh, several universities involved in our, on our work. We have two laboratories with universities. One is the uh, artificial intelligence uh, laboratory, and the other one is the electrification laboratories. We have some people from uh, university in our uh, company, and then we go off and also to speak with university in, or in order to work together with them. There is also a high level school, uh, which is uh, a little bit more of a master that is funded uh, in HP and is managed by uh, the University of Bologna, which helps uh, to uh, make very specific uh, uh, internal masters. So our masters dedicated to employees. We have three important partnerships that we want to mention. One is with Accenture. Uh, for the Industry X and the Innovation Center for the Machining. Uh, with ST Microelectronics, uh, we have uh, uh, set up a laboratory in HP uh, 
for developing uh, power inverters and uh, uh, some digital applications. So very, very important uh, uh, collaboration with ST. Uh, and then we, our Packel Enterprise, we have uh, uh, a joint center for uh, artificial intelligence application. You will see later some of our uh, work uh, also on that field. These are some of the profiles in terms of uh, competencies and uh, career growth we are uh, searching. So very diverse. We have, uh, let's say, set the map, take into account what are our actual need and what uh, will be the need in the near future. So you can see everything from mechanical, powertrain, CFD, simulation, and uh, the design, basically. Uh, there is some uh, new kind of uh, careers, like the artificial intelligence uh, application, and some uh, and a lot of uh, work also on the electrification, uh, power electronics, controls, and software, and the technology field. So um, a, lo a lot of different, uh, different possibility to apply. Uh, mainly engineering, but uh, not only engineering. So, uh, of course, uh, engineering helps people to uh, enter this kind of field. In particular, we are working on uh, components, uh, electromechanical components. Uh, so engineering is very core, but uh, we, are, we have also a lot of non-engineers uh, in our uh, staff. That is very, very good. And it's not needed to be actually an engineer to to work in this field. There are many other uh, possibilities, like, for example, in software and controls. It's not needed to be, for sure, an engineer. OK, um, some of strategic st skills. I'll try to go fast on this. For sure, for the electrification, now we are growing a lot. So all different uh, products that we are developing. Uh, we know that it's not easy to find people from university that are already uh, up to date with this kind of technologies because in, because in particular mechanical engineering is not as up to date as we would like to be. Uh, there is uh, maybe too much uh, studied still uh, related to traditional machines, which I studied and I know very well because I come from the internal combustion engine field. But I think uh, electrification, the mechanical engineering or the standard industrial engineering is still lacking a lot. We are doing a lot of fluid dynamics, uh, fluid machines, but no uh, electrification, which is uh, um, which is a problem for us. We know this, so we have thought uh, a way to be able to take a mechanical engineer or an industrial engineer or uh, a vehicle engineer with not so much uh, um, experience in the electrification field and make it grow in this field. So after this um, uh, training period, uh, it is very interesting for both of both the company and the employees. The employees get uh, two kind of uh, point of view, the mechanical standard industrial point of view, and also the adapt of the electrification competencies. And for us, uh, a mechanical engineer with also electrical skills, which is, in our opinion, the best uh, way to confront this guy in this kind of uh, the field. Electric engineering is still interesting, but lacking uh, the, the standard mechanical competencies uh, like are needed for technology to understand the impact of uh, the electromechanical design on the technology and then on the cost. It's very important. Uh, it's a very important thing that that, that, that kind of uh, competencies lack. So having both uh, competencies is very important uh, nowadays. Uh, for sure, control and uh, and software is uh, now needed everywhere, so it's not easy to find. Uh, here it is very specific uh, uh, competence, so we do not expect uh, to be able to find so many of these engineers or people that are interested or are capable of working in that field. But it's very interesting to work on it because uh, now software is everywhere, control is everywhere and it impacts so much in the performance of the final vehicle or the final product. 
then we still uh, we are still working on uh, uh, standard technologies transmission will never die uh, I'm, I'm referring to gear gearboxes uh, e axles uh, or a very complex transaxle for the uh, of highway field that is a very solid uh, um, strategic skill that uh, uh, one uh, uh, engineer can have because it will be always needed okay i will skip this kind of <laughs> metrics it's not so easy to present so um, what we do uh, mainly now we are focusing on product development with uh, a key uh, focus on being able to have a big base of production products in a serious production in about uh, three to five years so we are working a lot now in the, the actual development of new products that we are going to put into production in uh, three to five years uh, which is very interesting because uh, uh, we have several different products on different fields that are going uh, toward the production and when they will be on production uh, they will adapt of some production that we already have but there will be also the possibility to leave uh, the change and also this transition of the company moving from a product development company to a full production company still keeping the, that pro that uh, product development so one can enter now uh, participate in a product development activity up to production and then there will be the opportunity to choose to stay in the product development or go into a production team which is very interesting because production uh, it, it production it's uh, it's very complex production and logistics are the two most complex thing in the industrial world so in the future we 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 will have also a lot of engineers involved in uh, in, in production technology quality related to uh, mid series mid volume series production some of uh, mm, examples of product that we developed uh, since the past this is a two uh, cylinder internal combustion engine for a motorbike application um, this is an example of a complete hp design so we started from specifications and we ended up with the prototype uh, this is for of course for a tier one supplier uh, that has to actually this uh, motor into production uh, we designed almost everything for this internal combustion engine for sure integrating some uh, uh, of the shelf part like injectors uh, uh, spark plugs uh, but all, all, everything else is uh, designed uh, simulated and tested uh, by us and also some uh, uh, a lot of these components are also manufactured uh, actually in hp in particular the uh, alloy the aluminum um, uh, alloys uh, components and also some uh, steel based components for sure simulation has been a key asset for us in uh, these years just to give you an example this kind of uh, component uh, without simulation will be very very difficult to to develop uh, with the up-to-date uh, uh, power to weight ratios or power to displacement ratios uh, being able to get to those very extreme level that we have nowadays simulation is the key simulation uh, is very complex because uh, it's easy to do it when you learn how to do to use the software it's also easy to calibrate the simulation if you have actually access to the data the point is that you need to evaluate the simulation results and make them a kpi for you to actually develop and optimize your component because optimization is not always performance is a match between performance uh, design for manufacturing in particular cost uh, reliability so it's uh, you need a lot of experience on uh, the technology where the technology i'm referring for example to the technology of the component for example the internal combustion engine before being uh, a cfd simulation a combustion simulation engineer you need to be a internal combustion engine engineer 
which needs you to have very, very different competencies from basic mechanics to fly dynamics to combustion. It's not so so straightforward. So maybe you will be involved on a CFD simulation, but you will need to actually know the whole product. And that is very exciting because actually you will know and feel the component as you, your own. Um, just to mention some uh, some kind of uh, key point of innovation nowadays in the field of internal combustion engines, which uh, you may feel that is uh, dying as a technology, but is actually not, due to the fact that uh, it is a robust technology. We have reached the very low emission levels, uh, which in my opinion are also sustainable nowadays. Uh, taking uh, into consideration that there are also several other kind of emissions that a car actually creates, uh, for example, from the tires, uh, from the actual usage and production of the components. So in my opinion, it's still a robust technology. And uh, in particular, combustion science has evolved a lot. There are uh, on the market applic application of this kind of development that we have seen in the last uh, 10, 20, 20 years. Um, basically in, in cylinder analysis and in cylinder optimization. And there are also a lot of studies in terms of innovation that you can find easily on uh, papers because it's mainly research, but it's applied research with the actual tested data that show that there, we have the, the technology ready to have uh, multi-fuel, for example, or uh, peculiar combustion uh, systems that are capable to reaching uh, um, unmatched efficiency, uh, thermal efficiency, and also have uh, re the reduction of uh, emissions, raw emissions, uh, to a level that uh, has not been uh, reached uh, before. So now I think uh, we need to think as a system uh, if it is really the case to complete, uh, completely abort the internal combustion engine, because I think uh, that kind of technology can help us still reducing emissions more than we think. Uh, FAA, here a lot of analysis on internal combustion engines. Uh, this is a V4, I think, for motorsport that we developed in the past. Very different analysis. One of the most complex analysis is the FAA for uh, the thermostructure analysis of the head, the cylinder head and the cooling because you need to match um, several features and see if uh, the joint uh, relationship between mechanical stresses and thermal stresses join together are not breaking your component, not breaking today, but breaking after 10,000, 20,000 uh, hours of actual work. And when you are working with very extreme power displacement ratio, internal combustion engines, this is not straightforward because you don't have the space uh, uh, to actually uh, well cool the system. Valves are very thick, very big, in order to have a high uh, flow coefficient. And then cool everything down with that kind of power developed that uh, for each single cylinder is not, is not easy. Uh, so optimization here is the key. The, the simulation is very complex, uh, so optimization is not often do it, uh, done automatically. You need to do it by experience and by relationship between what you have done in the past. So there is also a legacy you need to, to grow up. Today, if you want to start a design a new internal combustion engine, it's, it's impossible to do it without a legacy. You need to have several internal combustion engines designed, evolved, broken in the past in order to be able to have the know-how to actually design a new engine. In terms of testing, I've seen it before, test beds uh, are now the key point of checking your design. For sure, also correlation is important, but the very point is that when you are trying to put a product on the market, you cannot test it. You need to test it, you need to test it on several point of view, performance and functionality is one, then you have uh, ambient testing, uh, validation of it, uh, uh, durability. Uh, you, need, you need to overstress your component, uh, take into account uh, the different fields of application you can have. 
take into consideration, for example, a tractor. Okay, a tractor machine. A tractor machine can be used both to work on the fields, for example, here in, in the modern uh, country, or you can have it work, for example, in uh, a north country moving snow, for example. And you need to, for example, have uh, the starting of the internal combustion engine from uh, plus 80 degrees up to minus 40 degrees. And the, that is the, a single component that needs to be capable of doing it. So doing a, a single test bed analysis on a single temperature, room temperature, is not, not enough to test your compote. You need to test it on the, all the different conditions. You can also evaluate it to test it, for example, in different fields uh, of uh, uh, chemical aggression, for example. Take into consideration an application of a tractor or a forklifter that is working on a, a harbor near the sea or on the country. It's very different, the salt level on the air and the, the corrosion that you will have on the components. So testing is uh, still a key and, and more and more a key asset. In particular, because now quality is so important and it's not uh, acceptable to have uh, fault in application. If you own a tractor, you own a car, and, you, and, and a component uh, lo breaks during your, us your usage, uh, the image of the company that's actually selling that component is very damaged. And now is, nowadays it's not, no more acceptable. So it's not possible to have uh, breaking components. So testing is the key and validation is the key for it. Uh, motorsport, uh, even with the budget caps that you, I think, know very well, because m maybe all of you <laughs> are passionate of this field, is still an important part of the market. Um, in particular, here in the modern area, there are a lot of companies that are leaving thanks to the motorsport. Formula One for sure, but there are there is still a lot of interest and a growing interest on different kind of racing championships, like the endurance championship. For sure, MotoGP is is an important field, and also other kind of motorsport related championships. We are working about uh, on all of, all of them. Uh, each one has its own uh, uh, complexities, and so uh, we we try to face them uh, both in terms of product development, but also on uh, services. So, for example, we we also do co-design with our customers on their component, on their car, or we supply components, for example, electric electrical machines, inverters, or internal combustion engines. Uh, for sure, the carbon neutrality is uh, a key asset, uh, except from uh, developing the internal combustion engine, as I told you before, uh, in terms of uh, combustion science with standard uh, gasoline or mixed fuel application. We are also working on the IC hydrogen application with combustion. We are working with e-fuels. And uh, we are working on fuel cells applications. Uh, this uh, both for automotive, uh, of highway, and uh, um, uh, marine application also. For sure, electrification is our key access of development. And uh, we are mainly developing and producing electrical machines for uh, aut 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 automotive field, supercars, uh, racing applications, uh, defense applications, of highway applications. So very different electrical machines for very different fields. It's very different, interesting uh, field because you can develop an electric motor with a small team. So it's uh, very, there is a lot of involvement in the development and uh, it's a lot uh, of technology related uh, component. So as the technology improves, because it's, uh, there is a lot of improvement uh, uh, that needs to be done in electrical machines uh, manufacturing, 
uh, also the performance uh, and the, the, the complexity of, of the electric motor grows. So very, very interesting field to work on. Uh, for sure, also system design and simulation, so complete vehicle with a powertrain, electric powertrain, hybrid powertrain, with all the, the simulation involved and design involved. Of course, there is a lot of mechanical engineering also behind. So if you are still interested in doing that uh, uh, old-fashioned standard mechanical engineer as a, draw, a strong drawing skill, uh, strong tolerances, experience, technology experience. There is also a lot of need of it uh, behind this kind of components. Simulation of every kind related to each of these components like MVH. MVH is now a key point for uh, performance and uh, feeding of the component. So the noise that is emitted from each component needs to be properly simulated. And so we are actually doing it. And then you have also to test everything. That one is the test bed for electrical machines. We have the possibility to use a dyno or a back-to-back -back application to test both electric motor and power inverter. And we are now developing and producing very different kind of products from high continuity power electrical machines with higher pin technology, like the one on the left. Going to the right, here we have a supercar application uh, with Litz wire and uh, uh, an IPM rotor, hollow shaft, uh, very lightweight. And then we have extreme electrical machines for uh, motorsport. Okay, that's just to give you an overview of what we are doing. I uh, had the uh, say the luck to be involved on almost everything <laughs> uh, since when I was employed in HP. So I think I can answer you uh, the question you have, both in, in terms of question related to the technology of, or if you have uh, more specific question related to what uh, is our job, uh, what are our opportunities and what we are working on now. So thank you very much and uh, have a pleasant day. Lascio una domanda. Hey, uh, good afternoon, engineer. Uh, Matthiasi, thank you for your presentation. Um, I am very interested because uh, you mentioned the development of the AI develop, um, the AI department within Arcadia Coxa. Um, I would like to ask, uh, do you see um, any future, uh, especially in the near future, to incorporate AI technologies mm -hmm. into um, the simulation of electric machines and optimization in its design? Thank you. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Uh, it is actually already um, done. Uh, I don't want to, see, to say that now is straightforward, but I will say it because now you have uh, artificial intelligence as a brand, let's say. So you actually put a brand on something that is existing from, uh, I think, uh, 10 years at least, I'm, I'm speaking on the business, on the market, not on uh, the research field. So it's something that is now straightforward in the, in the simulation field, in particular for optimization. So I, I think uh, uh, in particular for the internal combustion field, uh, I have never designed an internal combustion engine where as, at some point of it, uh, some kind of uh, optimization using uh, using artificial intelligence has not been done so it is straightforward but it's, it's not so um, imperative to use it it's a useful tool you can use it to explore things to optimize the optimize things and if you take artificial intelligence and put inside of it uh, uh, the, all the optimization tools plus the artificial uh, uh, neural networks uh, and several several of other application 
you will see that is very used every, everything now. So, for example, if you want to, to optimize a slot shape in an in electrical motor, you can do it by try and errors, or it's easier to parameterize the, the geometry of that slot and launch a genetic optimization based on a neural network trained with the several oh, still simulation data. So I have to say that it is uh, now a uh, competency that is not required as a as a, um, as a, um, as a must, but if you have it when you do simulation and design, it is a plus. You will do the job quicker or smarter than many other uh, people. So I suggest you to, if you're not studying it, to try to use it for some kind of projects uh, or some kind of exercise because it will be very useful. Optimization, so genetic algorithm optimization or uh, neural network application, simple things. I think the most simple things are the most useful for the for product development. Then is, it is used also for production where more complex uh, systems come uh, into play. Um, uh, predictive maintenance but this kind of model are still on the development there are a lot of applications but i have to say that uh, we have first application we have not explored the complete uh, possibilities in that field because uh, the technology is still uh, growing uh, my question was about the how your company works mm -hmm. because you are talking about uh, projects that will develop in two three or five years mm -hmm. and so I would like to know if um, the company on this on this uh, projects will work on its own or with for example an R&D uh, department or will cooperate always with uh, a client uh, in, uh, in during the project Okay, uh, it depends. Uh, to give you some examples, in Formula One, we have a joint team with our customer, so it's uh, very linked with them. So there is no real separation between us and them. And that way, it's more a co design style approach. Uh, if you are referring, for example, for electrical machines, we have a dedicated product team. Uh, which I am leading, and they they are about 15 people with different uh, competencies. We have all the competencies inside our team, and uh, this team is work as a, as a team to put uh, uh, the product on the market from the very beginning, so from a concept up to the industrialization phase and the actual production. So. Uh, in that case, it's very internal development and your relationship with the customer is more related to um, product card and the specification meeting, some discussion on, on integration of the component on the system. So there is still a lot of involvement with the customer uh, and also a lot of uh, involvement with our suppliers. So it's, it's more a closed approach but what, what, when you, we are speaking about closed approach, we are still thinking on a lot of strategy and activities are done in order to make you work well with the customer, to deliver them a good product that met the spe the meet the specifications, and also be able to put your suppliers on a good point and the capability in terms of uh, technology to actually deliver you the, the sub-components that you need. So... And, and in the team, there are uh, uh, people that are uh, um, keen on it. So, for example, uh, the quality assurance team in, in electrical machine is expert in uh, stator manufacturing, insulation manufacturing, um, process capability of the machine that our supplier are, are use, using. So, uh, often you will find you to guide your suppliers in order to actually be able to deliver you the, the right subcomponent or system engineers for example that support our customer to properly deliver us the, a good product card because often in this field OEMs are not fully structured on it so we try to help them also to 
deliver us the good spe good specification level because otherwise they will uh, exceed in cost or they will exceed uh, in dimensions for example or they can match some unfeasibility on the performance to weight uh, for example uh, ratio so it depends but in the new fields uh, mainly complete groups inside hp and to give you an idea the groups are inside a single office often so one office for the identification one office for the transmission team one uh, office for internal combustion engine uh, team and uh, so on okay thank you very much and it's been nice to meet you